Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. We're talking about growing our faith or increasing our faith. And um, we found out the first day that God gives all of us the measure of faith or a measure of faith. So when we're talking about growing or increasing our faith, it's not necessarily that our faith is growing, but what's happening is the faith that we do have is starting to um, operate. It, it's, it's, we're releasing what's necessary within us in order to cause that, that faith to be active. Now, again, the first day, God gives us all the measure of faith. So we have faith. But then it's, for, it's up to us to get that faith where it's actually functioning and, and applicable in our lives. So that's what we're talking about, growing our faith. Um, so today I want to talk about growing our faith through believing the word. See, it's not enough just to hear it. Now yesterday, uh, Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes, it, it, again, it's not necessarily it means that it grows, but faith becomes active and becomes um, powerful when we hear the word and, and, um, and, and continue to hear the word. That's what we talked about yesterday. But it's not enough just to hear the word. And again, I kind of hinted to this a little bit yesterday. It's not enough just to hear it. Man, I got to believe it. Now, you know, when, when you listen to the word of God, a lot of times it doesn't make sense. You know, when, when God says things, and I use this illustration all the time, even in our church, um, when God says love your enemies. See, that just doesn't make sense in the natural. And so right away we go, is that what God really meant? So we start questioning it. That's called doubt and unbelief. That's unbelief. But what we need to do is take the word of God and receive it as the final truth and apply it to our lives even when it doesn't make sense. You do not have to have understanding to the word in order to apply it to your life. Okay, um, the Bible talks about in Hebrews, it, it says that, um, uh, th that they had a, an evil heart of unbelief. In other words, within their heart, they had unbelief that blocked the word. See, we talked about it yesterday. I, I need to not only hear it with my ears, I need to hear it with my heart. I, I need to allow that to take place so that I get revelation to it and understanding. So... An evil heart of unbelief means that uh, if you don't believe and you operate by unbelief, it's an evil heart. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we're not talking murder and adultery and all that kind of stuff. We're talking simply not believing what the word says. So I need to believe what the word says. Amen. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 says this, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Notice it says if you confess, that's with your mouth, you confess with the, the, your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart. See the believing takes place in your heart. Now once again that doesn't necessarily mean I have understanding to it. That just means that I heard the word, right? And I and I've applied, heard it not only with my ears, but I heard it with my heart so that the Holy Spirit can start giving me revelation to it. But then I believe it, not because I see it, not because I understand it. I believe it because God said it and it's true. And because my faith is in God, he's the object of my faith because he said it and I know that he cannot lie. And, and I know that he is absolute truth and his word is the word of truth and his Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Since I know all of that, if he said it, then it's true. So it's, it's a, a choice. It's a decision on your part. I've made the decision that what the word of God says, I'm going to believe. So we have, we have passages like in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 that says, I am the Lord who heals you. Do you believe that? Um, Psalm chapter 103 says, um, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives me all my uh, um, sins, forgives me of all my sins, uh, heals me of all my diseases. Do you believe that? 
How about First um, Peter chapter 2, verse 4? By the wounds, by his stripes, you're healed. Do you believe that? See, you go, well, I don't feel it. Doesn't make any difference what you feel. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, I believe it because God said it, and I'm just going to believe it. I'm going to trust him. My faith is in him. He's the object of my faith. Or Jesus healed all the sick among them. Do you believe that he's healed you too? Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 says that he, uh, that he carried our sicknesses, bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. He already did that. See, you can argue with it. You can say, but look at in the natural what's going on. You can't, listen, the way your faith grows is by hearing the word. First in your ears, then in your heart, receiving it. Re hear and receive, and now believe, even though the circumstances don't say the same thing. I know that's sometimes hard, but I hope I broke this down so you see. First of all, you hear it with your natural ears, but then you receive it in your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to start revealing things to you. And then you believe it. Even when it doesn't make sense. I believe it. Why? Because the object of my faith is Jesus Christ and him alone. And he will not lie. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm Keith Brown. This is Attack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.